is a lot. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome to Discover Your Destiny. Destiny is God's dream for your life. And our desire is to lead you to a rich and a satisfying life through a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. I too welcome you to the program. And understand this, that destiny is not a destination, but a journey. It's God's purpose for your life. And I know you have a purpose. I know God has a purpose for your life. And remember, Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. So I am excited about your tuning in today. I do believe you'll be blessed. You know, today I'm going to talk about um, resetting our hands. And every once in a while, we get challenged by someone that we say is smarter than we are or stronger than we are or richer than we are, and, and we make excuses for us not doing some things because our status. But my wife has a poem she'd like to uh, say today, and, and I told her to do this because it talks about the fact that we are equipped, and God has given each of us everything we need to please him and to work for him. So uh, let me see your hands, let me see your hands, amen. We're asking God to use these hands to draw people that don't know Christ to him, to use these hands to go in our neighborhoods, on our jobs, in our schools, wherever we need to go, because we are equipped. First lady, please. Bishop asked me to share uh, the poem Equipment. It's by Edgar Albert Guest. Uh, it was George Washington Carver's favorite poem. Uh, and Equipment goes like this, figure it out. For yourself, my lad, you've all that the greatest of men have had. Two arms, two hands, two legs, two eyes, and a brain to use, if you would be wise. With this equipment, they all began. So start for the top and say, I can. Look them over, the wise and great. They take their food from a common plate. And similar knives and forks they use with similar laces, they tie their shoes. And the world considers them brave and smart, but you've all they had when they made their start. You can triumph and come to skill. You can be great if you only will. You're well equipped for what fight you choose. You have legs and arms and a brain to use and the man who has risen great deeds to do began his life with no more than you you are the handicap you must face you are the one who must choose your place you must say where you want to go how much you will study the truth to know God has equipped you for life but he lets you decide what you want to be Courage must come from the soul within. The man must furnish the will to win. So figure it out for yourself, my lad. You were born with all that the great have had. With your equipment, they all began. Get hold of yourself and say, I can. All right. Well, well done. Well done. Well done. Tell your neighbor you are equipped. You have what it takes. You have what it takes. And uh, I want to take a moment uh, to, to welcome another part of our family uh, to El Paso, residing here all the way from Chicago. Amen. I, I'd, I'd like us to welcome uh, Mr. and Mrs. Dobbins. They are the parents of my daughter-in-law, Tiffany. Y'all stand up, Dobbins. Amen. All the way from Chicago. Welcome to El Paso. Amen. We welcome you. Amen. And also to Destiny. God bless you. Amen. And I know how it is. I, I tried to get my parents 
to move out of Jersey for years, and they wouldn't come. Amen. And so this is a great achievement, amen, to have them here. Amen. All the way. Now, they're going to appreciate it around December or January or February, uh, you know, <laughs> when the snow starts falling. Amen. And they're going to walk out and see the sunshine. Amen. So we thank God for y'all having, having you all here. Let's talk now. Um, St. John 9 and 4. No, I don't know if we read our main scripture in Ecclesiastes 9 and 10. Ecclesiastes 9 and 10. We're talking about work. Somebody say work. Now, work is not a dirty word. Amen. Praise God. Uh, you know, somebody said everybody must be intended to work because they got a book of job in the book of the Bible. And we know that's the book of Job. But at any rate, uh, <laughs> it reminds us that we need to work. Okay, verse 10 says, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it. Tell somebody, do it. Do it. With thy might, for there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. I'll read it again. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave. We only go through this life once. And God is saying now, number your days and remember, you need to work now while you have a chance, whither thou goest. And I appreciate what Jesus said in the word of God, he said in St. John 9, he said, I must work the works of him that sent me. This is an individual thing. Nobody can really work for you. They can work along with you, alongside aside you, beside you, but they can't work for you. So Jesus made the statement, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. Night cometh when no man can work. And as much as we hate to think about night coming, There'll be a time in your life, if God helps you to live long enough, amen, that you won't be able to work. Now, uh, uh, Pat, uh, Pastor Patrick and our, I are believing a certain scripture, amen. Uh, Pastor Patrick, how long does that scripture say we can live? 120 years. Now, I'd rather believe that scripture than to believe that I'm about to leave here. See what I'm saying? If, if I don't reach 120 years, you know, at least I know there's a scripture that says uh, 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 we can make it to that. So we'll see. We'll see. Amen. Some of us would not want to live that long. Amen. And some people say, well, yeah, I don't want to live uh, where I'm a burden on anybody. I don't want to be a burden. Well, let me tell you right now, I don't mind being a burden. <laughs> you know, when I can't walk up here, y'all just roll me up here. <laughs> and, you know, and I may not be. Uh, the pastor per se, but I'll be bishop and I'll just be praying and overseeing. So our text was very clear. He's saying now, understand, uh, once you go to the grave, there, there's no work, there's no device, there's no knowledge, there's no wisdom in the grave wherein we will one day go and we're not rushing it now. So he's saying, do whatever you're going to do with all your might. Don't fake it till you make it. Do it. Love somebody. Talk to somebody about the love of Jesus Christ. You know, you're all sitting in this audience today. You have experiences that could bless someone else who's going through that experience. And you thought it was, oh, it was a terrible thing that happened to me, but you made it through and you've got a story to tell. They look at you right now and you're driving a nice car and living in a nice house and neighborhood and dressing so nice. But behind every part of glory, there's a story. And, and, and so I'm just saying whatever it is, what sometimes we have to do without so much thinking of our physical hands is, is show forth our attitude of gratitude and let somebody know the goodness of God. Can somebody say praise the Lord? So whatever we're going to do, let's do it. Let's do it for real. Let's be for real. Let's be show enough Christian. Somebody say show enough. That's an old word, you know, but show enough. You know, in other words, I'm a Christian in the morning and at noonday and at nighttime and if you wake me up three o'clock in the morning, I'm a Christian, I'm a child of God. You know, if I make a mistake, if I sin, I'm still the righteousness of God. Come on, come on. I'm not going to let a bad thought, I'm not going to let a mistake make me dis dismiss myself from the body of Christ. I'm still the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. So 
Whatever it is, we're going to make it. Ain't nobody in this church going to hell. I said, we are, I'm not going. Who, who's not going? Who's not going? I ain't going to hell. Uh, I got one word for hell. Hell no. Now, that wasn't cussing. I was just making a statement, okay? I'm not going because God has provided. He sent his son 40 and two generations down. He, Jesus bled and died on Calvary that we might don't have to go to hell. Hell was not made for us. It was made for the devil and his angels, and we are not going there. But we have to work out our soul salvation. We're, we're saved by grace through faith. So it's a free gift. We thank God for the free gift. But once we receive that free gift, there's some work that we have to do to maintain it. Somebody say, praise the Lord. I was looking at a comic strip. I'm going to hurry uh, just this week. And, and it was very, it, not, not, not many of those are funny, but this one kind of made me smile. And there was a child that was trying to clean out a closet, young lady, and she made a mess. I mean, that closet looked like a bomb had just went off in the closet. And her dad came in and stared at her, the mess she had made. And she said, Dad, this is the best I can do. So her father looked at it and said, let me tell you what my dad told me. He said, if you can't do something right, don't do it at all. That child got a big smile on her face. She ran out of the room and told her brother, Grandpa's a genius. Because <laughs> he had just freed her from a chore. <laughs> We've all made a mess sometime in our lives. But as the song says, whatever it is, God is bigger than that. And sometimes we may not get it right the first time, but we try the second time, and we may have to try the third time, and we find out how many times it doesn't work until we find out when it does work. Are y'all hearing me? Galatians says, brethren, you have been called into liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. And sometimes people have a desire to go to India and then go to China and to go to the deepest, dark, darkest areas of Africa or what have you to serve when we can serve right here. I'm not saying missions are not important. I'm not saying there are people right now in Haiti and in the Carolinas that need our prayers, but there are people in El Paso that need your prayers. So it's saying we have to learn how to serve one another. Joshua served Moses. Elisha served Elijah. David served Saul. And I'm telling you right now, God will put somebody in your life that you can serve and show them love. Somebody say, praise the Lord. It says, for all the law is fulfilled in, our, in this one word, even in this, that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And I know sometimes the neighbor seems unlovable, but so did you at one time. You know, the story I told you all some weeks ago about the Good Samaritan, the story was very briefly that a man was attacked as he left Jerusalem. He was on the road and people jumped on him. Some people jumped on him and beat him bad and stripped him. In fact, they said they left him half dead. The story says a priest came by and saw his condition, saw him bleeding, saw him uh, in a bad condition, but the priest chose not to use his hands. He chose not to let the Lord use his hands. He was too busy getting to church to, get, to do the Lord's work and, and yet not remember there was, there was work to do right there. Later on, a Levi came by. You all know the story. I won't get too extensive in it. And the Levi looked. He did look, but he did nothing. He didn't use his hands. He went about his way. Then finally, a Samaritan, a non-Jew, a person, a group that never had any relations, uh, relationship with the Jews, and were very much enemies, but he saw this Jew boy in this bad condition. The Bible says this Samaritan got off of his animal. He went to this boy. He bound up his wounds. He put him on his horse, mule, donkey, Buick. Uh, that's what you got. Okay. Cadillac. You know, I'm just saying somebody, oh, I don't have, no, no. You got something you can do to help somebody. 
You know, you can help somebody. So, oh, I don't have time for that. Well, let me tell you what. Sometimes we have to take time. Doing the Lord's work requires a sacrifice. And so this man took this man to an inn and paid for his bill to be uh, 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 taken, taken care of. And the question was, who was the neighbor? Because the question had been asked, uh, who is my neighbor? And the neighbor was the most unlikely one, the Samaritan. And I'm here to say today, God wants to reset your hands to do his will. Can somebody say praise the Lord? A certain man had two sons, it says in Matthew 21. And any of y'all know if you have more than one child, they can be so different. Oh, I said, don't have three. Because you'll have to check one of them to see if, if the DNA is proper. Because your children can really be different. Amen. One likes to study. One won't study. You know, one likes sports. One doesn't want to do anything. I'm just not going to get into that. But this man had two sons. He went to the first son. He said, son, look here. I want you to go today and work in my vineyard. Now, the vineyard was where they grew grapes and what have you, and probably pretty hard work, chopping weeds and what have you. And this son had the nerve to answer his dad and say, I will not go. Now, in my day, you wouldn't have got past I will. <laughs> the not would have got you sure enough hurt. But he said to his dad, I will not go. But the Bible says afterward, he repented and he went and worked in the vineyard. The dad being hurt by this statement, went to the second son and said to the second son, I want you to go and work in the, the family vineyard today. And that son said, oh, I would be delighted. He says, well, I'll go just right now. I'll drop what I'm doing. I'll head to the vineyard and he never showed up. See, there are people that talk a lot and promise a lot, but do little. And how many of y'all know your action can speak so loud that your words have no significance? Are you with me? So I want you to know today, I'm not here to fuss at anybody because I don't know how busy your schedule is, but I want you to ask God to, to, to lead and guide you to, to reset your hands so you can work the work of God while it is day. Someone say praise the Lord. First Corinthians 15 and 58 says, Therefore, my, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast and immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. A song I love said, if I can just help somebody. My living, somebody say my living, shall not be in vain. Sometimes the most unlikely people, I told the story, I'm going to have to hurry, uh, wow, uh, in, in, in the, my, my, my Wednesday night class about two brothers that I dealt with personally in, uh, in high school, and uh, they were so opposite of each other. One was clean cut, soft spoken, just a nice guy. The other one was rough. I mean, he was a hoodlum. From the hood, rough, tough, gang banger. Processed hair with a do-rag on it. Had pimples on top of the pimples. And he was the one that God spoke to me and said, I want you to go and share Jesus with him. I told God, you making a mistake. Let me go and talk to the kind brother, the smooth looking brother. I think he's the candidate that I need to talk to. And God spoke to me and said, no, go and talk to the other guy. Make a long story short, I went to the, the smooth guy, the, the, the brother that was so kind, and I invited him to church and told him what I knew about Jesus. And, and he just agreed. He just, oh, yes, oh, yes, I agree with that. I agree. Well, you're going to see me next Sunday. All right, make a long story short. The other guy had a voice like this. Hey, man, you got a pencil? And then anytime he asked me for a pencil in study hall, I gave him three. I said, this guy, this is a bad dude here. One day I sat down. I said, look here, man, uh, you don't know me well, but I'd like to invite you to my church. And uh, church, man, I don't go to no church. Man, I ain't got no time for no church. I said, well, just, I'd like you to come by and just see how you like it. My hands, my hands found to do that, okay? God directed me. 
make a long story short, this guy, the rough and tough hoodlum, gangbanger, came to church the first Sunday, received Christ as his savior. Come on. Received Christ as his savior, joined the church, became a member, became a bishop, not just a pastor, but a bishop. You never know by using your hands what will come out of that you. Somebody say praise the Lord. It says in here, Jesus said unto them, I'm, I'm, my meat, he says, is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. St. Mark 10, 43 says, whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. I'm here to tell everyone in the building today, you've got to serve. You've got to serve. You've got to say, Lord, show me what I can do. Show me who I can help. There's people in your neighborhood, on your job, in your family, right around you. You don't have to travel for thousands of miles. Somebody needs your help locally. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Whosoever will be great among you is going to be a minister. And whosoever uh, uh, will be of the chiefest shall be servant unto all. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Lord. And it says in Galatians 6.10, as we have opportunity, let us do good unto all men. Somebody say, all men. I was ready to do good to the young brother that was clean cut, yet I wanted to ignore the one that looked like he would chew my head off. But he was the one that came to Christ. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise it says, do good, especially to them who are, the ho- are of the household of faith. Amen. Your brother and sister in this building, you don't know who's going through what. One thing about Christian people, and I'm not saying this derogatorily. Uh, some are, y'all are, some of us are the best, best actors and actresses in the world. And there's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to go tell everybody your troubles, but you ask them, how's things going? Oh, praise the Lord. Everything is fine. You know, and, and, and that's all right. But I'm letting you know, we don't know sometimes what somebody's going through. We don't know what they've been through. Some of y'all have been through some things that some folk going through the same things would have lost their mind. But God kept you with the right mind. Almost. He's bigger than that. We have found out that in the most critical situations in our lives, God proved to be bigger than that situation. When I think about the epitome of service, as I conclude, I think about Jesus in St. John 13 and 4. They were at the Lord's Supper. And I'm saying Jesus got up from the table. He did this just to show people that I'm not too big to serve. It said he laid aside his garment. And what I see there is sometimes we, 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 we are on a high horse. Uh, you, you know, you may have more degrees than a thermometer, but, you know, you, you, you still are, are nobody without Jesus. All right, y'all are mighty serious today. All right. You're nobody without him. Every degree you've received, every achievement you received was by the help of the Lord. He gave you the wisdom. He gave you the knowledge to work your job, to go into the military, to do what you've done, to achieve what you achieved. God gets the credit. So Jesus said, I'm going to show you all a lesson. He got up. He took his garments off. In other words, it ain't about what I'm wearing on the outside. God looks at the heart. And he took a towel and he put water into a basin. And the Bible says he began to do the thing that most of us would dare not do is wash the disciples' feet. I haven't seen too many pretty feet in my life. I've seen a pretty, some of y'all got pretty nice feet. All right, but I'm just saying most feet are not something that make you want to run and serve and wash. But Jesus, somebody said Jesus. Do you know during that day they didn't wear Bostonian, they didn't wear, uh, uh, give me some shoes, some shoe companies. Johnson Murphy, uh, Stacy Adams. And, and there's probably some that we can't afford that we can't say because we don't have none of those. Okay. But, but so, but you know, I, I see these women wearing these shoes that have the red, red bottom. Expensive. You know, well, I'm, okay, let me, let me get off that. But in those days, they wore sandals. Their feet were normally disgusting, dusty, dirty. But Jesus got up, took water, and washed their feet. Washed the thing that we, we, we look down on. But everybody knows in this room, when your feet hurt, everything hurts. 
Y'all ain't liking it. You, you, got, you get a corn, you're going to pay attention to that. I don't care how smart you are or big you are. So he said, now, you call me master and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. This is Jesus talking. But he said, if I then, your Lord and master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. Now, I don't per se think it's telling us to go to somebody's house and with some water and a towel, you know. Uh, but I, it, it's about not feeling above service. That there's no service that we can ex extend, especially to one another, that is going to be something beneath us. Somebody say, praise the Lord. In St. Matthew 10 and 42, it says, whosoever shall give a drink unto one of these, my little ones. This is how God counts every deed you do. If you give one of my little ones a cup of water, uh, only in the name of a disciple, he says, I say unto you that he shall in no wise lose his reward. No matter what you do, no matter how small it may seem, if you do it from your heart, God will reward you. Can somebody say praise the Lord? David said in the Psalm 40, I love what he said. He said, I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Yea, the law is within my heart. And I do believe in every church, you can't please everybody. Somebody said you can't do it. There's always going to be some critics. But I believe the more busy we get serving, the more busy we become using our hands to help somebody, the less time we'll have to complain. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. God has given you enough to share with someone. Y'all are living in houses, wall to wall, carpeting and easy chairs and all this, and somebody's out on the block with a piece of cardboard. You can help somebody. I said, you can help somebody. Are y'all with me? Psalms 102 says, serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with what? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. So my time is out. My, my desire is that you take away today just the request, Lord, use me. Use my hands. Use my heart. Use my mind. Use my voice. And now use my hands to help somebody. And you won't lose a thing. There's a great reward in just helping somebody. There's a great reward. There's a warmness. There's a warmness of just helping somebody. Go to the hospital sometime and just visit somebody you don't even know. And just say, I'm here to pray with you. You know, do a good deed for someone that can't pay you back. Amen. Oh, we send those presents when we know we're going to get two back. <laughs> you know, but sometime even in the season coming up, Thanksgiving and Christmas, see if you can think about doing something for somebody knowing that you won't get repaid. And God is a great paymaster. Can somebody say praise the Lord? I am so desirous of this church being a church that will love the unlovable, that will reach out to those that can't pay us back, and let God show us that you cannot beat me giving. Put your hands together for Jesus Christ. This year, we are after reaching a thousand hearts thousand souls for Christ and we're th almost there I do believe we're at 500 or more now I want you to know that Jesus already paid the price to reset you for eternity not just for a Sunday or a season and all you have to do is believe and receive the gospel's good news not bad news and, and, and Jesus said, you know, God said, I gave my son, whosoever believeth in him, God so loved the world, he gave his son, whosoever believeth in him does not have to perish. That's why I'm saying none of us are going to perish. I'm claiming that in Jesus' name. So today, you can reset your heart, your mind, your voice. Somebody said today. And your life. Jesus shed his blood that you might have this opportunity. And this is the time we're going to give you to do it. Romans 10, 9 said, if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you can be saved. So we, we have an invitation here for, for those that will receive it. If you are here today and you want to receive Christ as your personal Savior for the first time, the first time from your heart that you feel like God has reset you today to, to, to be brave enough to, to say, I want to receive Christ as my personal Savior. I want to be 
one of his today. Even if you hear that you've left Christ and you got back out in the times and did some things that were not pleasing to God, but you say, well, today's my day to say, Lord, reset me. Reset my, heart, my mind, my heart, my voice, and my hands. I'm going to pray a prayer, simple prayer, that's going to cause that to happen. I'm going to ask right now, every eye closed, every head bowed, eye closed, and anyone that wants to receive Christ today, receive salvation today, receive him as your personal Savior, raise your hand. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, raise your hand right where you are. We have something we'd like to put in your hand. I see a hand right in the middle there. Praise God. I see a hand. I see a hand. Oh, come on. Let's give that person that material because this is the first day of the rest of their life. And I thank God for the hand. Is there a hand that will be raised on my right side or on my left side? Amen. Just raise your hand. This is your day. This is your day to be reset. This is your day with all the things that you haven't done. This is a day for all that to be forgiven and for God to reset your heart and your mind. Are you here? I'll give you some time. Raise those hands. I see other hands being raised. Thank God for that hand. Thank God for the hands that are being raised. Are you here today? And you want to receive Christ as your Lord. Not for your whole family. You got to do it personally. Your Lord and Savior. You want to receive him. This is the first time you've done this. And you want to mean it. You want God to make sure you mean it. Just raise your hand. It doesn't take a whole lot of effort. Just to raise your hand. This is the invitation. And I want to pray with you today. Are you here? Are others here that will raise their hands? Well, let's pray. Repeat after me, Heavenly Father. I repent of my sins. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. From this day forward, I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord for saving me. This we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to congratulate you, everybody looking up and giving praise. Thank you for sharing this moment with us. Now it's official. You're part of the Destiny family. I hope the message today has blessed your heart and your family. And I'm looking forward to you being in a live service. There's nothing like a live service. 9 a.m. or 11 a.m. every Sunday morning. You'll be blessed. Bring your friends and your family and see what God has to say to you. God bless you.